of this Eisenberg. Can I... What is so special of these slips? I'll try to show you a couple of things. Um, they have completely different potential applications, but they show very well what is so special about slips, especially if we compare it to now quite popular idea of super hydrophobic surfaces, or in other words, surfaces that are inspired by lotus leaf. So lotus leaf is the sign of purity because it has the ability to shed water and as water drops off the surface it picks up particles of dust and any other contaminants and clears this interface. So the idea of having these self-cleaning surfaces coming from lotus leaf is a wonderful way to think about it. And before we go to slippery surfaces, I want just to show you how it works. But if we do it now in a different material, we don't have to do it on the plant. But what if we take material in this particular case? Uh, this is titanium. And... Show to me. So you could see the titanium plate. It has a little bit different color on its own, and I'll come back to color in a second. But there is a coating here um, that has structure, surface roughening, that is somewhat similar to a uh, lotus leaf. And now this structured surface of this uh, now coated titanium. Coated with what? Um, it's it is titanium surface that has roughness on it, then coated with the just a single layer of uh, hydrophobic molecules and together structure with hydrophobicity, not yet with the lubricant that we will talk about later on, creates a synthetic mimic of superhydrophobic surface that is similar to what lotus leaf has evolved uh, through evolution. Now, remember that lotus leaf evolved this to deal with water. So if I do, now let me put it right here, if I do use water, if I do use water, and I will place it now at an angle so you see it a little better, the effect, if I do use water and I put it look how it jumps off the surface look at this jet it's not wetting the surface at all it's just jetted off the surface immediately and this is exactly what happens with these droplets on the lotus leaf you created a surface that is not wetted by water. It's super hydrophobic. The droplets are jumping off the surface, leaving it clean and not wet at all, as if there was no water on the surface. You see nothing on it. So that's beautiful. It works very nicely. However, if I were to use oil, and let's remember that nature evolved this to deal with water and sometimes we're making a wrong assumption as material scientists thinking that okay now I will take this principle and use it for something different than what it's supposed to do through natural evolution so oil was not designed into this biological system or in any mimics that we make so if now I'm taking an oil, and let's say I want to use it uh, for protection from um, in oil pipes or in anywhere where, in addition to water, one wants to uh, protect the surface from oily substances. So let's see what happens here. Nothing. Not only that it's not repelling it, but in, in fact it leaves behind this trail never goes away and in some ways 
the same surface that was working so well with water now have even properties worse than a natural surface of, uh, that is just smooth and non-structured. Why? Because now all this geometry, all this roughness creates even more places for oil to attach. And therefore, it is actually really a bad approach to think about using lotus leaf uh, structures to deal with oil. You can do some tricks, there are tricks to do, but it becomes more and more complicated and overall a wrong strategy. So, so, so when you look at the, at, the, at, the, at the slips, could you explain that? So now, let's talk about titania again, because it's very useful material. It's useful for medical applications. It's useful for a whole range of, of heat exchanges. The range of things where titania can be used is very broad. But let's make the titania um, in a way that it can repel anything we want. And let's even begin with oil that actually failed on the superhydrophobic surface. What we have here are, again, titania coating. Gives you actually a couple more interesting ideas. Depending on the thickness of our coating, we can also play with color. So you saw that here it has this a little bit of yellowish tint. Depending on the thickness that we make and also feature sizes in it, here's a beautiful blue. Now, if I turn it into slips, and the only really difference in this particular case, it can be formulated differently as well, is instead of structured surface with air in it, we replace air with a lubricant. So now we invade the, the porosity, we invade the empty spaces in this structured surface with this specifically chosen um, lubricant and see whether now it will become repelling to anything we want. So let's repeat uh, the experiments and let's start with, I'll do it here, with water. And water is easy, it's just beating up and coming off the surface. Nothing, clean surface. You remember that oil here? Fully contaminated, this cannot come off at all. If now I take oil and I do the same experiment now with slippery surface, here's droplets of oil. They're not attaching. They're sliding off from the interface and come off. So now this material can repel water, can repel oil, can repel algae, can repel pretty much anything we want by designing the combination of materials and the lubricant that we use such that it's miscible and non-reactive with what we want to repel, then everything slides off because the interface becomes extremely slippery. And is, that, is there, is there an, an organism in, in nature that has this? Uh... This, our original inspiration came also with, from the plant, but in this case, pitcher plant. It's a carnivorous plant that has to, de to design a way to capture insects. So oily feet of insects, when they're in contact with the solid, they can always climb. But the moment this pitcher plant on a wet day picks up water as its lubricant, now the interface is water, the feet are oily, and now oil is always sliding on water. So they are now really hydroplaning inside this uh, in, inside the pitcher plant. So it's exactly the same idea. But I can tell you, it's not only pitcher plant. In our gut, uh, the fact that we have all the nasty things that go through our gut, with bacteria, with the, everything there, the fact that it's not attaching to the walls of the gut is due to the fact 
that the structured surface, also structured, of our of the walls of, um, of, of in our body is coated with mucus that acts as lubricant. So the liquid that goes through these our natural piping in some ways is never in contact with the solid. It is protected by the lubricant layer that gives it a very nice fast movement along the interface. And when you, when you look at this, because what, what are the, that must give endless possibilities, this, this slips. So can you give Absolutely it endless, because I've shown it on a metal, but what if I want to use it for making non-fouling lenses? That's becoming a little bit more difficult, because in addition to repelling uh, things, we also want the material to be transparent. Here is an example where we developed not only that it is transparent, here's a lens that has on top of it slippery uh, coating. It is fully transparent. In fact, we can make it more transparent than it was before because we can make our coating anti-reflective in addition to that. And now you can use it as a lens for camera-guided instruments that can be used in oil exploration, that can be used in medical devices, for example, in endoscopy, where you have to guide your medical instrument and have optical clarity at the same time through places where there is blood, where there is um, bacteria, where there is so many contaminating uh, substances that you otherwise want to repel because if they're on the surface of the lens, you will obstruct the view, won't be able to explore oil wells or our body. So we developed ways in this particular case. It's a polymeric lens, so just to make a difference, not on the metal anymore, on a polymeric lens and also transparent so that it can be used for applications where optical features are important. Yet another one uh, that I cannot, of course, drop now water or oil on it and you would see that it works. Yet another application, probably really important, is also related to metal in this case, but I will just mention this as well. So what if we talk about scalpels? What if I actually want the material to be not just repelling something, but mechanically strong? Because the function of a scalpel is to be able to cut through and to be uh, not to lose the coating of any kind that you have. But if I use it in medical setting, if we are talking about um, surgeries performed with scalpels, what happens with the regular scalpel as it goes through the skin, not only that it's immediately coated with blood that, uh, uh, that coagulates on the surface, but it also picks up bacteria from the skin layer. And even if we don't want, of course, we don't want that to happen, but this now skin um, contamination or bacteria in this case can be and sometimes is introduced into the wound through the fact that the scalpel has to go through multiple tissues. So what we decided to do is now to make a coating. And in this case, it's a coating on steel because steel is used as a material uh, for, for the surgical application. And we make a coating that is extremely mechanically strong. So in fact, our demonstration we're showing, we can take a diamond knife, scratch it in any way possible. It doesn't lose its repelling properties. But now with this scalpel, we can go through bacterial medium, through blood. We can cut soft tissues and end up with completely clean scalpel that didn't pick up either bacteria or blood or anything else. And that's just another demonstration. Um, we can have more. Uh, the other demonstration in the background, you probably see uh, green, a lot of green things. And these are algae um, growing on different materials. And we see whether one can create a substrate from which 
algal films can be lifted up very easily, whether to prevent fouling or actually potentially for um, harvesting algal films for energy related applications where you need to form a film but you also need to lift it up from the substrate. On the regular substrate, algae will attach and it's very difficult to get it out. But if you have a surface to which attachment of any media is significantly reduced, then you have a very easy handle on releasing um, algae from these substrates. And when you say coating, I mean, is, is that like paint or is it a, a foliar? What, what, what is it? Is it, is it a molecular structure? There is no single answer to that because we can and we do make it in different incarnations. If we are talking about large area coating, for example, we do formulate it in the form of a paint so that it's easy to paint a surface in a large area surface. In other cases, let's say we want to have a material that has other properties, let's say electrical conductance. Um, we actually can create that. We can still call it coating, but the material can actually grow from the underlying material itself. So on metal, I can grow it from the metal or I can deposit um, using electrochemical uh, approaches. So almost anything works depending which material you want to turn into the slippery behavior. Fabric works. It has natural porosity. You want to make fabric um, repellent to different liquids, specifically maybe poor applications in the labs where all kinds of nasty liquids are used. To do that, one can just use a natural porosity, natural feature sizes and fibrous structure of the fabric itself, then to decide what might be the, the right lubricant and then coat the fabric in such a way that it becomes repellent. So there are many ways to do it as a paint, as transformation of existing material or growing it on entire structure. For example, we've done it on um, refrigeration coil to protect from ice formation. And we just take entire coil, huge coil, that goes into refrigerator already in the shape of the coil. And we simply boil it. Actually, in this case, very simple process. But it's enough to create structure that is easily con uh, converted into slippery surface. So it could be anything you want. And it depends how likely you will use one way or another for coating. It's, it's, it's a nanostructure in a way that you, that you It change. is a nanostructure structure that comes either from the surface itself, it's already there, or we can impose it by changing the surface um, structure by etching or by growing. Or, so the, the range of possibilities to introduce porosity is huge. So what is this? What, 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 what is this? This is, a this is what you have here on this phone at this moment is the picture of the pitcher plant, which is a plant, carnivorous plant. Carnivorous means it consumes flesh. And the way it catches prey, in this case insects, is that on this pitcher plant, on the surface of this pitcher plant, there is structure and the ants or other insects can walk around it very nicely. Nothing is really happening. However, when humidity goes up or there is rain, the structure of this pitcher plant picks up moisture from air. This moisture coats the surface of the pitcher plant and creates a puddle of water at the interface. What happens then is that the same insects that before that were able to move around and attach to a 
solid surface, the actual uh, solid material, now only land their feet on the water interface. And the feet of these ants are oily. So now you have oil on top of water. While oil sticks to the uh, pitcher plant itself, it cannot stick to water. So what happens then, that the interface between oily feet of these insects and the water interface of this pitcher plant becomes extremely slippery. And these same ants would just really slide and slip into the tube, into the uh, stomach, if you wish, of this plant. And being inside, uh, trapped in this way, it is consumed by the pitcher plant, by the, uh, the juices uh, uh, that can uh, really use it as prey. So the interesting idea here is that the catching is not even done um, as many other carnivorous plants do it. When, for example, um, if we talk about Venus flytrap, the most known one has to catch it, really physically grab um, their prey, the insects that it's uh, preying on. In this case, this one doesn't even have to do that because the prey will slide into the stomach on its own um, due to this uh, layer of water that changes uh, the interface and makes this highly slippery. And that was also the basis for what you made with this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this slip. Definitely, this was an original inspiration for us, but it's beyond pitcher planted now. We use this concept, but we see more and more indications that exactly the same strategy actually evolved in natural world in many other cases. In, in our gut, um, or even scales of fish, for fish to um, swim faster and to reduce drag for, for the fish, the scales on their surface is actually coated with a layer of mucus that makes it into a slippery surface. Or even if we talk about our eyes, there is always a layer of tears that make our eyes um, non-fouling, so that any dirt that uh, suddenly end up in your eye can be easily removed. So this layer of a liquid on top of a structured surface is a very powerful uh, approach that is likely been evolved in many different species, but the original inspiration uh, was coming from the pitcher plant.